G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today on the channel we're going to be looking at bulk exporting PDFs in Revit using Dynamo and also my custom package Crumple. Um, so today what we'll be doing is doing a few things. So first of all, you're going to have to configure your PDF plotter in Windows to make sure that it can output bulk prints. I'm going to be using PDF24 in this case. It's a great and free uh, plotter and very easy to set up for this task. Um, you can use other plotters, but just be aware I'm probably not going to have them on my computer. So if any questions relate to how can I get my plotter to bulk export PDF, I recommend either using PDF24 or you may have to do some research to figure out how you can get yours to work as well. They're all a little bit different, um, so please don't just give me questions about plotters. It's not really something I'm very uh, keen to explore, um, and each of them is slightly different. From there, um, we're going to be using the Crumple package, so if you haven't already installed it, you will need to do so. From there, we'll set up a script, and we'll finally execute a bulk print. Um, so today I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2022 with its inbuilt Dynamo version. Um, I'm going to be using Crumple 2024.4.2, which I've only just released as a hotfix. So in this case, the printing node uh, had a bug left in it. Oops. Um, if you use the 2024.4.1 release, which I did announce on, on our LinkedIn, if you happen to see it. So if you are on that build that's just a little bit behind, uh, make sure you're on 2024.4.2. My bad. Um, as well as this, uh, I will be using a package that depends on Iron Python at the moment, so you will need the Iron Python 2.7 version 2.5 package um, if you are in 2023 or beyond. Um, it's assumed you'll have a little bit of knowledge in Revit, maybe on Revit API if you want to look inside my custom nodes and on Dynamo. And um, other than that, I think we're ready to jump in. Um, now, before I do jump in, I will preface. I know that there are free and paid add-ins out there that can export PDF. Uh, my goal here with this workflow is to give you one that you have more customization over um, and also one that you can potentially learn how to run this task through the Revit API with, which no add-in currently does. They're all closed off, even if they're free. Um, so if anyone says use DRoots, that's fine, but I assume you're not here to learn about printing PDFs in that case. You're here to uh, use an app that someone's already built. So please don't leave that in the comments either. I know there's great add-ins out there. Um, but if, as always, if I'm talking too fast, feel free to slow me down um, using the YouTube playback speed. Um, but otherwise, let's just jump straight into a model. So before I start printing, I've obviously set up a few things. I'm going to be using some view sheet sets in this case. So I've already set up a couple of view sheet sets, uh, just one for my wall setup plans, and one for my general arrangement plans, which I'm going to be using to control which sheets I print um, without the need for a user interface. So I've got that. Um, I think otherwise, the other thing you will need is a plotter. So I use PDF24. Um, it's a really great free printer, very easy to configure. Um, and you are gonna need to configure a couple of settings if you're using this one as well. Um, so generally I turn off all the assistant settings. I turn off the tray icon. The really important settings here, you're gonna to wanna to automatically save documents after you print. With PDF24, generally you're going to have to hard code a folder that you save PDFs to into PDF24 uh, rather than using my node to tell the files where to print to. Now you can uh, modify this behavior in some plotters such as Adobe PDF where it can receive the file path from Revit. In this case, I don't believe PDF24 can. But you are going to want to make sure in PDF24 that you have dollar sign file name, which will receive the name of the document that we provide to the plotter from Revit. As well as this, you're going to want to turn off all of these settings except for overwrite existing file. This will stop uh, various things happening that just aren't necessary in the batch print process. Um, from here, I turn off the shell context menu and then I turn off all the features. So effectively, it's really just a background plotter that Revit can access. You're also going to want to make sure before you print um, that you can actually see your print. It's actually going to work. Your setting is going to work as intended. And I can see here that my current print setting, which I've set up here, is going to work. So I've also set up a A0 landscape setting and an A1 landscape setting as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, we're good um, to jump in to our script. So I'm just going to quickly put something off to the side uh, that I can use as a guide as I go. I've got a little reference script. Um, but let's jump into Dynamo. So if you haven't installed the, crum the Crumple custom package already, you will need to. Um, it's very easy to install. If you go to Packages, search for a package, and usually I go sort by name. 
and to find my package, you'll just need to search for CRU, there it is. In this case, the 2024.4.2. Noting I did release one yesterday, but I've just done a hot fix for this node and a couple of other small things that I found. Um, as soon as I went to look, go back and use my nodes, which is great. Um, but anyway, so here we have crumple here on the side. I typically lay my uh, package out in a few sections of the library, and we're gonna be dealing primarily with application and Revit. So we're gonna be using application, first of all, to get our print settings. So I'm gonna to go to, uh, actually, I think we can get that from Revit. Um, I'm gonna be getting my printer name manually, but you can always check the names of your printers by using the window.printers node. And I'm gonna be using the PDF24 printer name later on in the process. So I'll keep that there for now. But what I wanna do now is in Revit, I wanna collect the print settings in my document. So I'm just gonna scroll down and collect and I'm gonna be getting my print settings. This will give me both the print settings and the print setting names. Now, what can we do with these print settings? How do we actually get the user to select one? Well, I've got a component in Crumple as well um, under script UI, which we can use for this called dropdown form. It's like a very basic interface form, similar to data shapes, uh, but it just takes a list of keys and values and a title and an optional size um, and just displays the, uh, the keys to you and passes through the value that you pick. If you cancel the form, it will pass through null um, instead. So I'm just gonna switch to manual mode at this point, and I'm gonna be passing through my print settings as the values and my setting names as the keys. Because I want the user to pick from the names, but pass, pass through the setting. In this case, I'm also just gonna say select print setting is my title. And we'll just see what happens with this component. So if I go run, in this case, I can see I've got a list with a dropdown and I can pick from my print settings. Okay, and I can see I've just passed through my print setting instead of its name. So that's our first building block. I'm just gonna create a group and call this select print setting. Now I want to pick a view sheet set to print the sheets from. So in this case, I'm gonna be using another UI dropdown and I'm gonna to go to Revit, collect, and I'm gonna be looking for the view sheet sets from this list. There we go. Now the good thing about these collect nodes is they can take a document or a link instance, but if they get an invalid input, it will just get the current document. So you can sort of take advantage of this to turn this into what we might call a pass-through or a trigger condition where the node will not execute until it's triggered by another node. So I'm actually going to use the output of my user interface as a trigger for my collection of the view sheet sets. And this means we won't run this step until the user has picked a sheet setting. I'm now just gonna create a code block, and in this case, I don't output the names of the view sheet sets, but I can very easily form a code block that's gonna be built to set up another UI dropdown. So I'm gonna do my title, which is going to be select view sheet set. I'm then going to firstly take keys, which in this case is the view sheet sets, which I'll call vss.name. So in this case, I'm asking for the name property and I'll also just pass through the view sheet sets on line three. And this will let me line up my inputs very nicely to this UI. So I can just go title, keys, which are the names, values, which are the view sheet sets. Now I've already executed this block in this run. So I should expect to now see the next one trigger and there it is. And I can now pick my view sheet set. Let's pick my general arrangement plans. And there's the view sheet set. From this, I can then ask my view sheet set for its views using this node from Crumple, the view sheet sets views node, which in this case should return the sheets contained in that set. So now without the need for Dynamo Player or a complex user interface, we very quickly obtained both a print setting and a view sheet set. So in this case, I'm gonna add this to the same block and just say select sheets from set and I'll just put that up to the top. So from here, the next thing that we wanna do is actually give these sheets a name uh, that makes sense. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the sheets name formatted node, which is gonna use my typical naming rule for sheets. So if I take these sheets in and just use the default settings, we'll see that it will be, in this case, a project number dash sheet number bracket or space square bracket, revision, close square bracket, space dash space, and then the sheet name. 
but I've given you inputs to omit the project number, include the revision or include the name. So in this case, let's say we don't want to include the project number because in this case, it's not really a suitable project number. Let's say we do want to include the revision and we do want to include the name as our default setting. If I rerun this, we'll see now I just have the sheet number, the revision, space, dash space, and the sheet name. Likewise, I can also omit the sheet name if I want to. So you can see this node very quickly lets you just apply some very common formatting to form a suitable sheet number. So in this case, I'm just going to use these default settings, but you could make these inputs for Dynamo Player if you wanted to. And I'll just say process sheet names. I'll just tuck that down here. And I might actually just save my script while I'm at it. That's probably a good idea. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually print our PDFs. So this is going to be found in application Revit, and we're going to be looking for print to PDF. Export to PDF uses the inbuilt Revit exporter, which I found has some memory issues that sometimes won't finish a print job, especially a very big one, whereas usually using a native print function will get there. Export to PDF is also limited to Revit 2022 and above. And in the new version of Crumble, you'll actually find I've built in a version check, which will cause the node to be bypassed if you're in a lower version. So in this case, generally, if you're in a higher version than 2022, or then 2021, sorry, you might be able to use this node, but just be aware it does have some performance issues in Build to Revit, in my experience. It can sometimes just crash, which isn't great. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hard code my directory path to my print folder, which I've already created on my computer as well. So I'm creating my print folder in C, users, Gavin, and in this case, I'm just putting it in a folder called export export folder, I should say. And that is the same, the same folder that I've coded into my PDF24 settings. So in this case, we can see that I'm by default saying that is the folder I wish to target. So I'm gonna copy this path and in a code block, I'm just gonna paste it as a string. Now, because I'm in a string using uh, slashes, I am gonna to need to use escape characters to make sure that they register as, as a, single, a single slash in the output string. So if I just run that node, I'll see now that all of those double slashes have registered as a single slash because that's how you have to represent those slashes in a string representation. In this case, I'm now going to feed that in as my directory path. We now have our sheets and their names. I have my print setting from all the way back here. I have my printer name, which I know is always gonna be PDF24. So I can just create a little code block and call it PDF24. And I'm always gonna run, I wanna run this as well. I'm just always gonna set that to true. So at this point, we now have the bare bones of effectively a batch print run. And I might just actually put these all just in the same code block for neatness. There we go. Now I might also want to open the print folder after I finish printing. So I can use a pass-through, which in my package I call wait for. So under script, under flow, I'm just gonna be using the wait for node, which will send something through when another node finishes. So I wanna send through the directory path when I've finished printing. I then wanna open that directory path. So under application, windows, I've got a directory open node um, buried somewhere in here. There we go, directory open which will try to open the provided directory path. Finally, I might wanna see if any sheets fail to print. In this case, I've got an output called was printed, which in this case will be true if it managed to print or false if it didn't. So I'm gonna pass this into a filter by Boolean mask as the mask cast over the sheet names. So I can see the numbers of the sheets or the names of the sheets that didn't print. So in this case, let's just have the ones that did print as an output, and then a secondary list of that, those that did not print. And finally, of course, we can just clean up our nodes a little bit. So I'll move this over, make this my printing block, open my directory, I'll report the outputs 
And we can see that using Crumple, I very quickly built a very powerful workflow with uh, not too many nodes. Now, of course, all of these nodes have a lot of Python inside them that cause them to actually work. That's, that's, that's the, tr the trick here. But the great thing about using a custom package with Python is I can just edit a custom node and I can very quickly look and see exactly how these nodes function. So if you have some degree of Python experience, you can look below the hood and see exactly how my custom package is working, which is one of the benefits to using it. And that's sort of the intent of Crumple. I like to keep things open, easy and approachable. So without further ado, I'll close the script and then I'm going to do a full run from start to finish. In this case, I'll close my print folder. So I'm gonna go run and we have to first pick our print setting. I'll pick A0. Then I print set, I'll pick my GA plans and it should begin printing. There we go. So because we're in Dynamo, we're not gonna see a loading bar. We're not quite gonna know the progress. Now, of course, once the prints have opened, we can go check them or we can be in the folder already and start to see the PDFs plotting. But there we go. The last one's just coming out now. I can see that's triggered and there we go. Now, the last mistake I made is that was printed should be the Boolean mask. But other than that, we can see that I've just successfully batch printed these sheets. Of course, I can also just do one more test just to make sure it does actually work. Let's try a different sheet set. So I'll pick A0 and this time let's target my wall set out plans. And we should be able to watch these start printing to the folder um, before we have to wait for the folder to open at the end. And there we go, we can see it's applying the naming rule. It's plotting to the sheet that I've pre-configured in PDF24 and we're effectively creating a batch printing workflow uh, with one sheet at a time, unlike the inbuilt limitation of a combined binder being the forced output. Um, but that's effectively it. Um, so I hope that's a, a useful workflow. And if you want to learn more about the Python, I hope that having a custom package like Crumple helps you see how it all works behind the scenes as well. So you can find um, Crumple in a work in progress state as well as my scripts over on my GitHub. Um, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. Um, otherwise, I hope you found this a useful video and you might be enjoying using Crumple as well potentially. And you can contact me uh, at the email here or in the comments below. If you have any video requests, so like, let me know. I do have a bit of a backlog that I'm working through right now. I haven't forgotten any of them, trust me. Um, there's just a few topics I'm working on. So I look forward to seeing you in future videos and I hope you enjoy batch printing. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care.